Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for coming and attending today's Marine Science Day. My name is John Griffin, and I'm the Assistant Director for Admissions and Student Affairs here at the William & Mary School of Marine Science at Vince. So today I'm gonna to start off with a brief overview and presentation about what the School of Marine Science is and some of the details about that. And then I'm gonna be joined by four of my phenomenal graduate students where they're also going to tell you a little bit about themselves and their story. And then we're going to have a large amount of time for a Q&A. With that, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to dive into it. So to begin with, get this. So the School of Marine Science here at William Mary School of Marine Science at VIMS. As you can see from this photo right here, this is the VIMS campus, or at least part of it. And this is our main research campus, um, which you can find in Gloucester Point, Virginia, and right on the York River. It's a gorgeous campus, um, and it's the best place to be for people who are really passionate and excited about marine science, because as you can tell, we couldn't be much closer to the water. You can just throw a rock and you'll hit water. So really great to be in the exact location that we study and research and are so passionate about. But the school itself, we are a part of William & Mary. William & Mary is a globally recognized university in, um, located in Williamsburg, Virginia. And we at VIMS are located about a 30 minute drive away from there. William & Mary has five graduate schools in total, including VIMS. So we're a part of a large university with multiple other graduate programs and a really robust academic environment. Um, we have three research campuses. We have the main one that I'm currently at, which is in Gloucester Point. We have another smaller one in Topping, Virginia. And then we have our Eastern Shore Lab out in Wachapree, Virginia, which is right on the um, Virginia Eastern Shore. So we are one of the US's largest marine research institutions. And what comes with our multiple campuses and our size is a number of facilities and amenities that are really important and impactful in our ability to do research and support um, the study of marine science. So this is just a small list, but this is kind of the exciting thing. We have an oyster aquaculture center, a shellfish research hatchery and nursery, a seagrass nursery, two seawater research labs. We have our boat basin, 30 plus research vessels, which help us get out on the water. And then we have multiple on-campus partners that are here doing work with us. Um, they're really impactful in making sure that we're translating the science and the work that we do to community members, to K through 12 education, to teacher resources, all the way up to um, legal aids, um, policy advisors, and all the way to the top of Capitol Hill. So we at VIMS, as I said, are one of the largest and most impactful marine science research institutes in the US. And a lot of that has to do with just like this rich academic and um, passionate environment that we have. We have 50 plus faculty members here on campus. All of them possess their doctoral degrees in their field. And what that means for students is that when they come to VIMS, they're getting hands-on and in-person experiences with some of the best faculty and researchers in the world in their areas of study. So by the time they graduate, they've had a lot of lesson plans, curriculums, experiences um, in the field or in the lab interactions with these renowned faculty so that when they graduate, they have all the tool sets and all the knowledge and skills that they need in order to continue being the amazing and impactful marine scientists and marine professionals um, that we are known for producing. But now honing in a little bit more just about the School of Marine Science, we offer three separate graduate degrees in marine science. We offer a professional master of arts, a master of science, and a PhD in marine science. So our professional master of arts in marine science is a two-year non-thesis based master's program and it's really intended for students who are passionate and interested in marine science, but aren't wanting to spend all of their time and in their career in the field or in the lab or writing up their research for publication. They're instead wanting to be at that space in between research and um, application. So communicating with outreach specialists, with educators, policymakers, um, businesses, community programs, anything like that, where they need to be translating and engaging with the science in professional fields. 
Our Master of Science is our research and thesis-based master's program. So these are our students who are really passionate and have that burning question in their mind that they want answered. So they come to Vince and they spend a lot of their time in the field, in the lab, working on models in order to answer those pressing questions that they have. And then finally, our doctoral degree in marine science is our, our top program. Um, and it's the one that is producing the students who are extremely passionate about the research and the work they do, and that they know that they wanna go on and be faculty members at universities or colleges, have their own research labs, constantly be publishing and working on grants, um, or be operating at top level positions in science research. As for the community of students that we have here on campus, you're gonna to get to hear from some of the, my amazing ones here soon, but we have 85 to 100 graduate students on campus at any one time, and they're the best. They're the most energetic and wholesome students you could imagine, and I'm really excited to introduce you to a few of them and to have them here on campus. Marine science is a really broad discipline, and what you're gonna hear from my four students is that they all study very distinctive and unique things um, and so they get to talk a little bit about the breadth that is marine science. But here at VIMS, we have an expertise in coastal and estuary science in the Chesapeake Bay. However, our research really extends all the way from these inland watersheds to the open oceans. We have students who are focused all their research on the Chesapeake Bay. And we have students who go to Antarctica yearly. We have students who are currently in Asia or in Europe doing their work. And it just allows us to have a really broad sense of impact. And VIMS has also been around now for 80 years. So we've awarded over a thousand masters and um, doctoral degrees in marine science. So that just means that our graduates from VIMS are entering into an even bigger network and family of VIMS alum who know what VIMS does and the power of our program and are passionate about it. So just continuing into a really big network. So that's enough of hearing from me. I can't wait to introduce you to my, my graduates now. We're gonna be hearing from them in this order. The first up, we're gonna hear from Melina Lohr. Then we're gonna hear from Alexandria Marquat, and then Stephanie Pert, and then Alexander Smith. And it's an array of master students and PhD students all in different areas. And with that, I'm going to stop sharing. And I would like to invite Melina to come join me on screen and to tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Thank you, Melina. Thanks, John. That was a great intro. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Melina. I am a second year master's student at VIMS. I am hoping to bypass from the master's program to the PhD program, and I'm also pursuing the policy subconcentration offered at VIMS. Um, I chose VIMS as um, my graduate program because for me, when I was applying to a, a variety of programs, it just seemed like the best package deal. I had a really good connection with my advisor and um, I work in disease ecology so it was attractive to me for VIMS to have a wide breadth of faculty that work in disease ecology. I didn't want to be the only student working on this topic um, and it as John mentioned it's right on the river so I always get to be close to the water which is great. Uh, for my actual work I study how viruses evolve which has become very pertinent to um, our news, uh, but I study viruses and how they change in the context of aquaculture. So after I finish my degree, I'd really like to find um, a career in either a government agency or a nonprofit um, organization working on sustainable aquaculture or disease management or a combination of the two. And um, that's a little snapshot of me. So I look forward to hearing everyone's questions today. Thank you so much, Melina. We really appreciate it. Um, so next up, I would like to invite um, Alexandria Marquat to come join me on the screen. Uh, so Alex, will you please join me and tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Yep. Hello, everybody. My name is Alex, and I'm a first year PhD student in the fisheries program here at VIMS. My research is primarily focused on the biology and population trends of oysters in the Chesapeake Bay. So one of my current projects is looking at survival and growth in really, really young oysters that have just settled out on the reef, um, which is a life stage that we really don't know a ton about. I was really excited for the opportunity to come to VIMS for a suite of reasons, but one of the big ones is that it's a really unique institution. They provide 
research education and advisory services for the state of Virginia. So a lot of the work that we do here is either provided to or even directly collaborates with agencies that are doing management. So it helps us get our data into actual management and policy as opposed to just sitting and on a desk somewhere. I had a really wandering path towards getting a PhD here. I started at a community college and for a really long time didn't think that a PhD was even really a possibility for me. But I'm really excited to be here and studying shellfish, which has become a wonderful passion. I'd love to talk about clams and shellfish as much as you'd like. And I'm looking forward to hearing your guys' questions. Well, Alex, we're very excited to have you here at them. Um, and now I'd like to invite Stephanie Pert to come join me on center screen and tell everybody a bit about yourself. Stephanie? Hi everyone, I'm Stephanie Peart. I'm a third year master's student in the biological department here at VIMS. I study estuaries and more specifically, I use computer models to study how carbon and other nutrients cycle within our local estuary, the York River. Carbon is super important because not only is all life on earth mostly composed of carbon, but carbon also plays a huge role in water chemistry and and how well a marine environment is able to, able to function. Carbon is also really important when it comes to water chemistry and it can impact how well plants and animals are able to grow as well as determine where they're able to grow within a, in the water. So carbon is super important and I find it very fascinating to study. Now, before I came to VIMS, I completed my undergraduate degree at Stockton University in New Jersey and I received my Bachelor of Science in Marine Science. And while I was at Stockton, I jumped on every opportunity I could to do internships. And some, of, and because of that, I had one of the really cool opportunities I had was that I got to go out to sea for five days in the middle of the North Pacific Ocean near Hawaii. And it was also from some of these internships that I actually learned about them because VIMS is a very reputable school in the marine science world. And I, and it was actually through one of my professors at Stockton that I learned and was introduced to my advisor here at VIMS, Mark Brush. And at first I chose to come to VIMS simply because it was close to home. Boy, I am so glad I chose to come here, come to VIMS to study because we have an amazing administration team. We have amazing faculty, staff and student body. And everyone here at VIMS really works on fostering a sense of community. So here at VIMS, I very much feel like this is my home away from home and I get to study something that I really enjoy. And once I graduate with my master's degree, I plan on coming back to VIMS to complete my PhD program simply because I just love it here. And I think this is an excellent school and a great place to study. Well, thank you, Stephanie. We love to hear that and we love to have you here. Um, and last, but certainly not least, is our second Alex, Alexander Smith. Would you please come join me and tell everybody a little bit about you? Yeah, thanks, John. And hi, everyone. Um, so yeah, my name is Alex Smith. I'm a third year PhD student here at VIMS, and I'm in the, the physical sciences department. Um, so I grew up in North Carolina, and absolutely marine science was not something that I thought I'd do for my life. I had a, an intense fear of fish. So, you know, marine science, not the best field to avoid fish. Um, but I had this really good opportunity in undergrad to work in salt marshes in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. And there sure aren't as many fish there as there are in the ocean. Uh, so that, that kind of um, uh, has snowballed into, into me coming to VIMS. And here I study how climate change uh, affects carbon storage in our coastal ecosystems. So I look at things like salt marshes and forests and barrier islands. Um, I'm really good proof that you don't actually have to get in the water to, to study marine science. Um, but yeah, VIMS is a fantastic place. I can echo everything that everyone else has said with the, the great community, the great faculty, the great students. Um, but also, I, we can't downplay its location here on the Bay from even just a practical point. Uh, it, it's very nice being able to take a, a 15 minute car ride or a 15 minute boat ride to, to your site. It's it's fantastic. VIMS is really uh, critical in, in a lot of our, uh, our research here. Great, well, Alex, thank you so much. Um, and so with that, I'm actually gonna ask for everybody to turn their cameras back on and come join me in center screen. 
and we can now start asking some questions that are coming in in the chat and a few questions that I also have that I want answered. Um, but the first question comes at us, and I think it's aimed at you, Stephanie, um, and it's very science-based. So could you please tell us how does carbon help the water? And also, how can the plants grow better because of it? Oh, that's a really good question. So general, and I, I am happy to answer this question because generally, you know, we hear about carbon emissions and like, you know, climate change and greenhouse gases and, you know, kind of on the negative side. But without carbon in the water, we literally could not live or function. Life as we know it could not exist because plants like the microscopic little plants called phytoplankton as well as seagrasses and other plants, they need carbon as they, in the water as their for, one of their forms of food. And then they grow and they produce, you know, they grow up as plants and then fish eat the plants and then we eat the fish. And so um, it's the whole, it starts the whole cycle of the marine food web. Great, thank you. The next question that we have was, how hard was it to get into the school? I have some thoughts on that, but I'd love to hear you all's thought on it. I don't know how difficult as far as a process goes. Actually, I find like the application to VIMS is very easy, um, very straightforward. You go to the, um, their website, um, you know, the actual process of applying to grad school here at VIMS is very easy and user-friendly on the web. Um, as far as what you have to do to qualify <laughs> to come to grad school here at VIMS, that's a different story. Um, but the actual process of getting here is very easy. Also helps if you have an advisor or a researcher that you know that you wanna work with. So like I applied specifically to work with my advisor. And so that I think helps streamline the process of getting into the school because he was there on the other side going like, I want this student, please. <laughs> that's also the same for me. I think that's pretty standard for VIMS and for a lot of other marine science and ecology programs. That's something that I think it's hard to just like know unless you already know somebody who's in grad school or has gone through the application process, but you definitely want to have an idea of who your advisor will be at the school if you're accepted. And it's definitely worthwhile to reach out to them and have a conversation or even a few conversations or try to write a grant together or something like that. So you wanna have a little bit of uh, an idea of if you mesh well personality wise and research wise before you even look at the application and what is that, what all is on the application. It's a hard question to answer because uh, it's sort of like compared to what, have you already applied to grad school? Are you in high school right now? Like um, everything is kind of relative, but if there's a more specific focus, like just pop it in the chat and we'll get in there. Yeah, and just to, to go a little bit more in detail for that, just as, a, as the admissions officer here, my advice would be know what type of program you're interested in and applying for. So we have our three separate programs. We have our professional master of arts, and then we have our master of science and our PhD. All of our MS and PhD students who is this group here, um, they not only apply for the School of Marine Science and all of our general requirements, but they also need to know what lab and advisor they wanna enter into their um, the program with, because they need an advisor in order to be offered admissions. Um, whereas a lot of like your open enrollment and your professional degrees of marine science are um, a pool of applications um, in which you can apply for. So a little bit different. And I would just suggest researching what program is what and what interests you the most. And then never hesitating to reach out to faculty or administrators because that's our job is to answer questions and to help support students coming into the program. So and John's the, really, really good at doing that. Oh, well, thank you. Um, so another question we have is, what are some things younger about high school age students can do as practice for getting into these fields? Oh, I would say internships. Definitely, um, there's a lot of internships available to high school students if you start looking into it. Um, and like I said, I jumped on every opportunity I could to intern. Um, and that's actually what led me down the path to VIMS and like learning that I discovered. I learned from internships what I like and what I don't like about marine science and which areas I really love. 
And it was actually through networking from internships that I found my way to them. So <laughs> internships, that's like what, like what I would highly suggest beyond just like studying and doing really good at it, um, like in classes and taking um, science and math courses. Volunteering is another avenue. So I ended up volunteering in high school at a wetlands education center, um, which is not marine science. I was actually focused on wildlife um, when I first started out in the field. It was more wildlife biology than marine biology, but here we are. <laughs> um, uh, and that just gave me a little bit of experience, even just with education. There's lots of transferable skills that you can pick up from unexpected places. Alex Smith, since you study more uh, non-living things. Do you want to talk about it a, a little bit about how you kind of got into there and what you see from others for getting into the physical sciences aspect of it? Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of people have the, the misconception that you need a strong quantitative background to be in the physical sciences. It's like you need to be a physicist or you need to be a chemist or something like that. Um, when that it certainly helps, but it's not necessarily the case. Like um, if you're in high school and you have the opportunity to take some of those more quantitative heavy uh, science classes, absolutely go for it. But if your school doesn't have that option or anything like that, uh, no worries. Your your high school life doesn't doesn't necessitate your, your career down the road. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in like the more geology chemistry side of things where you can't necessarily go out into the world and like see them with with your own eyes uh, a really good way to like get that that alternative is to to volunteer in labs like this if they're available to you or to you know go on youtube youtube is a great source the internet exists i mean really though it's it's really fantastic <laughs> perfect thank you um there is a question that came in from dean and it's a great question, and I'm so excited to answer this. So the question is, do you get most of your students at VIMS as undergrads from William & Mary or from a variety of other schools? Awesome question. Um, so actually, usually only about one student per incoming cohort comes to us from William & Mary, which we're a part of. Most of our students come from all over. Um, and that being said, I legitimately mean all over. We get students coming to us from landlocked states in the Midwest, like Iowa and Wisconsin and Colorado, um, from coastal states. I know we got a bunch of Californians um, in this room. And also internationally, we have students coming from India, from the UK, from China and Japan, um, from South America. So just because where you're located or where you're going to school, does not limit you or take you away from being able to be a marine science. So you can apply from wherever you're at and from whatever you've done, um, it can work out. So we only have, I believe, a minute left before we need to wrap this up. So I'm gonna ask one final question of all of our students here, just for the fun of it. Um, and they already know this, but if you could be one marine or aquatic critter, what would you be and why? and quickly, who wants to start? I'd be a dolphin simply because they're energetic, amazing and awesome and they can travel far distances as well as travel different places such as up and up story because they can handle different um, salt concentration. I'd be a deep sea squid. Um, I think their uh, skin is really cool and um, I'm kind of afraid of the dark and deep water. So I feel like being a squid would kind of mitigate those things. I would have to go with some type of nudibranch or a sea slug because they are flashy and they are toxic. So things don't really eat them. And some of them can steal from plants and produce their own energy from the sunlight. Like they are amazing. John already said that I couldn't pick mud. Um, <laughs> But I'll pick the next best thing, uh, probably a mud crab and salt marks are so important to the ecosystem, those little guys. Thank you for playing along, Alex Smith. I really appreciate it. Um, so with that, we're now out of time. Um, so Melina, Alex, Stephanie, and Alex number two, thank you all for, for being here and joining me in this and providing everybody with an inside look. For those of you in the audience, also thank you for joining. And if you're interested in applying to graduate school and interested in VIMS, please take a look at our website. Our application for the next year's cohort will open on August 1st, and I'm more than happy to talk to you about applying here and coming here as a grad student. 
everybody, thank you for joining us um, and have a wonderful rest of your marine science day. Take care. <laughs>